Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for going out to see where, where this is. Uh, Jamie Hathaway told me you were going there and sent me a couple of pictures uh, when you were there. And when you see it, you fully understand it. Tim Reeser, who is uh, here, has worked for decades on, on this issue with me, knows what it's like to actually go to the landmine fields. My wife and I have gone to them many times. She's a registered nurse, and she understands what it is. Uh, Tim and I and some others will, go, will be in Vietnam next uh, week after next and where we used the Leahy War Victims Fund years ago when President George H.W. Bush wanted to do something uh, to show that we were, re we were reaching out to Vietnam. And we did this, and you've had similar experiences, Richard, I'm sure, with Meg. I, we went on a very, very hot day, southern part of Vietnam. We're going to where they're setting up the a lady war victims fund for prosthetics for people who had been crawling since the war. There was a man, a very small man, no legs, uh, sitting there. They're introducing me in, in Vietnamese and periodically say my name, and he's just staring at me. And I think he must see a large American and must hate me. And they, I'll never forget, they, and I was in an open neck shirt and chinos, and they said, when they finished, would you go pick him up and put him in the wheelchair? All the time he stared at me. I picked him up carefully, put him in the wheelchair, started to get back up, he grabbed my shirt, he pulled me down, he kissed me. Wow. Now, uh, you have stories like that, but I've also, you think what Mag does, you don't know how terrifying it is to be in one of these landmine fields like they are. And I'm glad we're able to show some of these pictures because there are rarely ever happy endings in these stories. Uh, when you go out, I mean, I, I remember being staying here and I started to move and the guy grabbed me back. He said, don't go another inch and detected there was a landmine there. I was in one war zone visiting a young teenage girl in the hospital, lost both legs. Uh, her story was that the war started, her parents sent her away where she'd be safe. Hostility stopped. She's coming back, she spots her parents, she's running down the road, speaking to them in their language, uh, calling out to both of them. Landmine goes off, she lost both legs. I mean, there are no happy endings. We've had Bill Clinton, worked at uh, saying we should start finding alternatives to landmines. Under the Leahy Law, we can't export landmines from this country. And incidentally, the one time all 100 senators came together on something. But we didn't sign the landmine treaty. We didn't sign it to two terms of President Bush, even though I urged him to. President Obama, I, I think he gets tired of the number of times I talked to him about it. The United States of America, the most powerful nation on earth, should sign the landmine treaty. We should sign it today and set that example. Uh, it, again, the thing to remember, there are no happy endings when you're facing a landmine. Thank goodness for MAG. Those who help pull up these landmines, they're very easy to put down. You can put down, Jamie, as you know, you can put down a hundred, you can fill this room in a matter of seconds, but it might take you weeks to pull them back up. If our children, if my grandchildren lived in an area where we had to worry about landmines, wouldn't we, everybody in this country come together and say, sign the treaty, stop the landmines, make it criminal to use them? That's what we have to do. So keep fighting, and I just got the word. I got three minutes left for a roll call vote. I'd rather stay here with you, but thank you all very, very much.